All right, good morning. So here we are yet again for another lovely lesson of MENG 3310 Fluid Mechanics. This is going to be lecture 18, or actually lecture 19 in the series, and we're going to continue on with some uh, <coughs> a brief example of, um, of the energy equation, and then continuing on to a discussion of, um, of the continuity, some more of the continuity equation and shear strain in fluids, and also um, some streamline equations. So let's continue. So I want to work through an example here, <coughs> really on the topics from last time, on the energy topics from last time. So I want to work through an example with a pump and a filter to illustrate how we handle these topics. So let's work through an example here. So let's say the following is given. The following system is given. Oh, I'm going to have a pipe that is entering a filter and also going through a pump. So let's say I have a pipe that here, there is one end here, and then it's going to enter a filter and then it will go into a pump. This is my crudely drawn filter. Filter, and then there will be a pump. There will be a pump here. And then after here, after the pump, it will exit to a smaller diameter pipe. And we'll be analyzing this combined system. So let me compare points one and two. I'm going to compare point one here and point two over here. Point two over here, and uh, this is going to be gauge pressure. So um, that's why I'm going to I'm going to have a negative pressure here, but it's a gauge pressure, so that's okay. Uh, so P1 is going to be negative uh, 20 kilopascals. And P2 is uh, unknown. We'll find that later. Uh, here. Let's see. There's that there. And then let's say here. Okay, so there's that. And I'm going to have a pump that is a 25 kilowatt pump. There is a 25 kilowatt pump, and this thing is 80% efficient. This thing is 80% efficient, and it will tell the areas at each point. It will tell you the areas. The, air, the area one, area one is going to be 0 0.0785 square meters. 0 0.07, or oh, actually 0 0.007, sorry. 0 0.00785 square meters, and the area at point two, area two is going to be 0 0.0019 uh, meters squared here. Oh, and also I should mention, um, sorry, the pressure at point two, this is actually just exiting directly into the atmosphere. So this is exiting here, so P2 is going to be zero atmospheres, or zero kPa gauge pressure. So basically we have, I don't know, maybe a, a pump that is uh, filling maybe a, a tank or a container or some, of some sort that's at atmospheric pressure. And uh, maybe, or maybe a good example of this would be something, maybe like a swimming pool pump or something. You're, you're drawing in water from a, a, a line or something, or maybe this would be a, a pump for a fountain, or maybe for a fountain or something like that. This, I think a fountain would work better. So I think you have a, maybe something like a fountain. You have a pump that is pulling in water from a, either the, the reservoir itself or from the main lines. But it then wants to, especially if it was pulling it from the, uh, the, the, um, the reservoir of the filter itself, or sorry, of the reservoir of the fountain itself, you would want some sort of filter there to filter out any kind of algae or debris or whatever, so it wouldn't damage your pump. And then afterwards, it is, this is exhausted uh, uh, directly into the, the atmosphere at the same elevation, but at um, zero kilopascals of gauge pressure. 
And so then I want to find, so all this is given, and I want to find uh, the head loss in filter. Uh, head loss in filter when the Q, the flow rate, is equal to 0 0.05 uh, cubic meters per second. All right, so let's work through this solution. So again, we have a known pressure here and a known pressure here, which will be gauge pressure of zero. Uh, not absolute pressure of zero, because that would be disturbing. Um, we have the area at this point here, area one and area two, and we have a pump with a known efficiency. And so the rest we can sort of figure out from here. A solution, so I'm gonna base all of this off of the same energy equation that we have seen previously. all going to be based off the same fundamental energy equation, just a modified Bernoulli, really. P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 plus HP, the head of the pump, is going to be equal to P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2, uh, plus any head loss in the system. And this head loss will come from the, uh, from the filter in our case. We're not yet considering uh, major losses like pipe losses, but we'll get to that later in the semester. So immediately I can cancel something out, and what I'm gonna cancel out is this Z1 and Z2. It's at the same elevation, so that means the Z1 and the Z2 are gonna be the same. And then in turn, I can also say that the pressure here is zero gauge because it's venting to the atmosphere. And then I can uh, go on from there. And um, well, I, need, I, I have, the problem here is I, ha I don't have V1 or V2, so I'll need to solve for those. I, I do have P1, and the HP of the pump can be found relatively simply. So V1 and V2 will be found from our a simple flow rate equation. And I can say that V1 is going to be equal to Q over A1, and assuming this is water, with at, at, um, which means it will be incompressible, et cetera. Uh, so I'm going to say this is um, a flow rate of 0 0.05 uh, meter cube per second, which is provided, divided by the area of 0 0.00785 square meters. So that's how we'll find v, uh, V1. And then V2 is going to be equal to 0 0.05 cubic meters per second, the same flow rate, divided by 0 0.00785. 196 square meters, the area at point two. And this is then going to equal a velocity of 25.5 meters per second here. Then I want to find the HP, the head loss of the pump. And if we remember from last time, the head loss, or actually the head of the pump, it's not a loss, it's the head, the head of the pump. This is going to be providing energy, not taking it away. So I really shouldn't call it head loss is going to be equal to W dot times nu divided by gamma Q. So this is going to be equal to 25,000. And again, I, I, I will re-mention the way efficiency works in the cases of pumps. In the case of pumps, what this means is I am going to be um, the wattage that I provided earlier, the 25 kilowatt pump, that is the energy that, that is the electrical energy, or I guess you could also have like a gas pump or something, or the diesel pump or something, but um, let's just say it's an electric pump. If it's an electric pump, that means it is taking 25 kilowatts from the grid, but it is not a magic, it's, it's not a magical genie. It cannot just magically give 100% of its energy um, directly to the water. There's always losses. There will, in any system that converts energy from one form to another, even in the best design system, you might end up something that's 99.99% efficient. There is always going to be some losses, and, and this is to say nothing of heat engines, which turn into the maximum of Carnot efficiency, and you learn about that in later classes, or you've probably seen that already in physics. But uh, anyway, the um, any real system that's going to be constructed cannot be 100% efficient. There's always going to be some energy losses from, uh, even in a very well-designed system, low uh, friction system, there's going to be energy losses from friction, from vibration, from noise, from... Uh, expansion, contraction of materials, any number of things can cause um, losses. 
even in very well-designed systems. So what this means is we may be putting in 25 kilowatts of energy into the flu, or from, we may be pulling 25 kilowatts of energy from the electrical grid um, in our pump, but only about 80% of that will actually be um, transformed into a head or pressure or, or velocity in the system or in the fluid system. So then I just, from here, it's just plugging and checking. 25 kilowatts is going to be equal to, I want to use base units here. So 25,000 uh, Newton meters per second, Newton meters per second times uh, 0 0.8 divided by our gamma, which is 9,800 uh, Newtons per cubic meter, the gamma of water. Newtons per cubic meter times the Q, the flow rate, of 0 0.05 uh, cubic meters per second. 0 0.05 cubic meters per second, or this comes to 40.8 meters of head, or uh, basically 40 meter, 40.8 meters of energy entering the system from pump. is entering the system from the pump. All right, so from here, it's just plugging and chugging. I'm going to write out the energy equation again. Negative 20,000 uh, pascals divided by 9,800 newtons per square meter. Um, sorry, newtons per cubic meter, 9,800 newtons per cubic meter, plus our uh, velocity 1, 6.37, or velocity 1 term, I should say, um, meters per second, squared divided by <laughs> 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared, and then plus our pump head of 40.8 meters. And then this is going to equal our um, pressure 2, which is 0 term, plus 25.5, the, the velocity term for position 2, 25.5 meters per second, quantity squared, divided by 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared, and then plus our, our what we're after, which is our uh, HL head loss term. And if we combine all these together, if we run through the math, if we co go through the calculations, we will find that the head loss, HL, is equal to 7.69 meters. Uh, HL is equal to 7.69 meters. OK. So let's continue then. So that's a brief example on the energy equation. So I want to discuss the acceleration field and how we can, um, and, oh, do you want to see that back there? Okay, sorry. Let's go back a little bit. Again, the head loss was 7.69 meters from the, um, um, from the filter. And you know what? I think I'm actually going to cut this off here on a very short lecture, just finishing up this example, and then maybe I'll record the second one a bit later in the day.